going on, people? My name's Liam, and I am here to help you today with drawing a square in perspective. It's a little trickier than, than you might think, and not as difficult as it could be. And there's definitely more than one way to do it. I'm going to cover two of them today, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. If this is the kind of thing you're into, um, personally, I love this stuff. How to draw a perfect square in two-point perspective. So first thing you do is set it up right. And the first thing you need is, of course, the horizon line. And then you want the line of sight. Now, the line of sight is important to be perpendicular to uh, the horizon line. Um, and you'll see why in just a second here. Next, you're going to need to find the cone of vision and the standing point. The cone of vision is like a cone that projects from your eye uh, outwards at a 60 degree angle. Um, in this case, is 60 degrees anyway. 60 degrees is a good number for two-point perspective because it keeps everything from being too distorted. So that'll help us find the standing point. And then from there, what you do is you find your vanishing points, and I have them turned at the moment. I'm going to turn them so they are straight. Okay, so these are the basic lines for really good perspective. Okay, so let's draw this thing. There, boom. Now we're going to draw from that corner to the second vanishing point. So this should be pretty straightforward if you've messed around with perspective too much. This one here will just make sense. But the problem is, to get a perfect square, this um, last line is a bit of a mystery, correct? So the way to figure that out is, you take the corner that's closest to you and you connect it to the center vanishing point. The, the uh, vanishing points are always at a 90 degree angle and the standing point is really key to figuring this out. So when you connect this line to the center vanishing point, it gives you your 45 degree angle vanishing point and that gives you the connecting line here for your square. Let me erase these to show you there. Boom. Yeah. There you go. See that? So that's basically a perfect square in perspective. Let's try it over here over here. Take that line, connect it to the vanishing point, draw another line here to make it kind of a bigger square, I suppose. Now you're going to connect this to the center vanishing point. And that's going to give you this right here, that corner, connecting that corner out. And we've got our square. Was that easy or what? Okay, so let's make this a little bit different. And there's lots of variations. I mean, in a perfect world, everything is symmetrical and nothing is irregular. But of course, that's not the case. And as soon as you start to use perspective to draw anything, it gets really complicated. But the good news is, is that if you have a good, firm grasp of the basics, the more complicated stuff is, is a lot easier to do. It still takes work, but it's definitely easier. So let's clear out those vanishing points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate these perspective points, this 90 degree angle. I'm going to rotate that from the standing point. The standing point is really key to all of this. So I've just moved the rotation point of the, the transformation here in Clip Studio Paint. It's much the same in Photoshop, but Clip Studio, I find, is just a whole lot cheaper than Photoshop, and I, I like it. I've gotten really used to it. All right, so what I've done is I've just rotated the 90 degree angle from the standing point that shows you where your vanishing points are. Standing point is how you figure this stuff out. So your connection to the vanishing points is a 90 degree angle and where they intersect with the horizon shows you where those vanishing points are. Let's draw another square. We're 
we're going to draw this square with the front edge connecting to the two vanishing points. And now we have the same problem, except that what's happened is, is because we've rotated the vanishing points, now our line of sight is no longer 45 degrees between the 90 degree angle of our vanishing point. Now, if you were to put it in the middle of the horizon, it's not going to be accurate. It needs to go by degree from the standing point. So we got to break out a protractor, which I just so happen to have. The more you do this, the easier it gets. The repetition is key to anything, to getting better at anything, especially in, the, in art. Okay, so let's find our diagonal 45 degree vanishing point on the horizon line. There it is there. Boom. So we have our center vanishing point. We now take our closest edge and connect it to that center vanishing point. And that gives us this intersection here. And there you have it. You have your square. Now from there, you can build up in three dimensions into a cube. You can figure out a sphere, but this is the fundamentals here. And as you can tell, just to get to this point here requires you to understand the cone of vision, the standing point, and how vanishing points are related. So here's a couple of notes about ellipses. Ellipses? Ellipses. First thing to know is that they have a degree. And the degree is the degree from which you're looking at it. If this guy was looking straight down, it would be 90 degrees. If he was looking over here, it would be about 45. If he was looking straight on, it would be, um, well, it wouldn't be an ellipse, it would be a flat line. So that's generally how they go. They go by degrees from 90 all the way down. If you buy like a pack of ellipses templates, they go to about 15 or 10 degrees, which is really, really thin. This gives you a sense here. So if your standing point is down here, this would be a 90 degree ellipse, which is a perfect circle. And then from there, they start getting more and more thinned out as you go back and the uh, degree gets lower. Now, thing number two about ellipses, ellipse, ellipses, ellipses have two axes. Aside from being really difficult to say, they're also kind of hard to explain. So here is a nice looking ellipse, hello. And you have the major axis on the long side, which for our purposes does absolutely no good aside from just touching edges. And then you have the minor axis, which is, okay, so the minor axis will be perpendicular to the plane that the ellipse or circle is resting on. Okay, so now we're going to use an ellipse to complete a square. So let's draw a line over here. There's a good one. Another one here. Now we have this and we need to use an ellipse that touches all three of these lines here and then shows us where the last line of the square is to close it off. And it does a pretty good job. The thinner you can make the line, the more accurate it's going to be. Now you have to have it perpendicular. Um, the minor axis should be pointing directly down in this case because it's resting on the ground. We're going to move it. The idea is to make it touch on all sides. The more perfect it is, the better. So what you do is the last line just touches the side of the ellipse right there. And there you have it. That gives you a nice accurate square. Example number two. Right there. And now we're going to make an ellipse that touches all three sides and shows us where the last side is to close it off.
All right, so there you go. That's two methods to drawing a square in perspective. Uh, one is to use the standing point, and the second is to use an ellipse. All right, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way through to the end, I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to click subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for more art tutorials and comic goodness. Talk to you soon.